Okay. Hi, folks. Okay, we're going to go uh, to the next uh, round. Now, I already did the Ynet News article, Hebron evictions cause political strife. That's in video one. This garbage article from Erud Sheva, PM, uh, Israel to authorize return of evicted residents. Okay, so those are setting aside. Okay, so this one I'm going to go through, which is from the Jewish press. Okay, a compromise on Hebron building expected amid coalition brawl. Now, just so you understand, right now in the Knesset, there's only 61 seats. 61 seats is the most minimum majority you can have to have a government, and that's right now what it is, 61 seats. So any MKs that would leave this coalition would force another vote or some kind of reworking of the coalition. Okay, a compromise is emerging in the crisis over the two buildings in Hebron, whose legal owners entered them on Thursday and were removed on Friday. They couldn't even wait. They couldn't even let them have a Shabbos, okay, in the building. They came in on Thursday, and Friday morning at 9 a.m., okay, the forces came, police and IDF, which is really, it's tragic. It's tragic that, I mean, IDF soldiers don't follow orders, my friends, okay? Call in sick that day or, uh, you know, develop cramps on the way to the uh, eviction. Don't go against the Torah. It's not, not going to be good for you. It's just, I mean, your own personally, you are. You can have a lot of judgment over that and you know I care about you people and I don't I don't want to see that judgment come your way and it will come your way okay so IDF and police forces threw them out okay apparently one of the conditions posed by the security apparatus has been changed that the main entrance of the buildings would face the Jewish neighborhood the Jewish Avraham Avenu neighborhood okay and not the Arab street However, the Security and Defense Ministry officials told Israel Radio that the process of letting Jewish owners back into these buildings is being conducted in keeping with the law. Only after the purchases examined, the security and the political ramifications, like I said in the first video, they're going to dissect the, the purchase, which is done. Two houses purchased, okay? But then they're going to discuss security and, and politics. Just like the other building which I spoke about, which is was bought in 2012, yet still to be occupied, okay? Now, I can jump down from this article, okay? They're saying it was uh, just discussing, they're saying they're going to be back in there in a week as a PR stunt to take pressure off your loan, okay? But what really is interesting is, is that the families who bought these buildings are Likud members. <laughs> That put a trick in your trick bag, huh, Netanyahu? Ooh. <laughs> they weren't uh, friends of Baruch Marzel. No, no, no. Or uh, Michael Ben-Ari. Mm -mm -mm. Nope, they are your card-carrying Likud members. That's who bought these houses. And you threw them out. Likud threw members of their own party out of their houses. Now, Yalon's political advisor, and I'll put his uh, Twitter handle down there too, Itzik Ashkenazi, on Friday tweeted that the presence of Bayoudi in the government is harmful and the Prime Minister should think about a brand new path regarding partnership. Now, this reference was unmistakably a dig at Bayoudi Chairman Naftali Bennett, who last week accused Yalon uh, of frozen conventional thinking incapable of considering new paths. Now, I don't know what Yellen was talking about there and uh, and Naftali Bennett were talking about, <laughs> about new paths and frozen thinking. I'm, I'm thinking Naftali Bennett was probably telling him, we need more Arabs. We need, I don't know, you got to defend the Arabs there, bogey. <laughs> we need new, new thinking about how to defend them because I, I think this is all, I think Itzik Ashkenazi, I think this is like a, a two-stage chess game here where he's... Because Naftali Bennett is taking such a hit that this guy, uh, Itzik Ashkenazi, is basically, um, you know, running cover for him. It's like in an army position. 
you know, he's drawing fire to his to his position to help Naftali, because I mean, Naftali, his political days are numbered. Okay. Now the biggest article out of all of them was written by Tova. You can see there Lazarov and Lahav um, Harkov, and it's a pretty extensive article. You can see. I did a you know reading through it, highlighting through it, so I'm going to try to jump through it and uh, see what y'all think. Okay, so right wing. I'm just going to go through the highlighted stuff. Right wing politicians and activists verbally attack you alone for fighting villagers. I don't like that S word. Tova. Rather than terrorists. Netanyahu respects villagers who stand courageously and with determination against terrorism on a daily basis. Yeah, sure you do. Sure you do, baby. Sounds good. I mean, sounds good, but sure you do. Okay. We respect the law. And not all permits have been authorized. The moment this happens, and it the moment this happens, so we're talking two, three, four years, that's the moment that it happens, okay? See, so people got thrown out of their houses and they won't be back there for two, three, four years. Right wing politicians, however, didn't back down from the threat that destabilized the coalition because it's just disgusting. And they go on to talk about the 61 seat coalition, which I told you about. Two politicians, Deputy Regional Minister Ayub Kara and M.K. Oren Hazan, are from the Likud and Bezalel Smotrich from the Bayou D Party, just like I discussed uh, in the first article from Ynet. Tur and this is another one that weighed in, which uh, you know I'm happy to see. Tourism Minister Yariv Levin, another Likudnik, demanded that Defense Minister Moshe Alone stop the evacuation. Now, just as a person buys a house in Tel Aviv without unnecessary bureaucratic process, the same should be true in Hebron, Levin said. At the time, the time has come to an end the unacceptable discrimination against the villagers in Judea and Samaria. Now, by UD, which is in the coalition, one of their faction heads, Shuli Moalim Raffaeli, like many other right-wing politicians, attacked you alone. If the coalition is important to Netanyahu, you should intervene and restrain Yalon. Time and again, the defense minister chooses to destroy legally purchased homes that are entangled in complexity rather than allowing for legal examination of the situation. She warned that her faction would consider additional steps unless there is a change in policy, specifically with regard to these two structures. Smotrich added that Yalone could unilater unilaterally determine, that could not unilaterally determine coalition policy. Bai UD leader and education minister did not make any public statements, but Bai UD did make a statement, and apparently they probably ran it by Bennett. They do say that he uh, contacted uh, Netanyahu in Davos, which is another, that's a story for a whole other video, Davos, uh, and what goes on there. But at 9 a.m., the border police came in, and they started the eviction. Right after the evacuation, now listen to this, this is just disgusting. Right after the evacuation, a number of young misplaced Jordanians... I'm going to stop using all the words that they use. So, after the eviction, misplaced Jordanians, families that were placed in this area by Jordan after the 48 war, the War of Independence. Okay, they stood on nearby rooftops and waved their Jordanian flag with the extra little piece on it. Okay? Because look at their flag and the Jordanian flag, you'll see pretty much no difference okay these two buildings are named Beit Rachel and Beit Leah means the house of Rachel and the house of Leah and Yalon of course indicated that we are under a rule of law but like I said in the first video 
what law? Not Jewish law. Not Torah law. Certainly not. Now, this is a sure recipe for anarchy, <laughs> Yalom said. Okay? No, you're the recipe for anarchy, Yalom. You're the one who causes anarchy with your misplaced values. Now, the settlement, the settlement, the village issue is important to me, but I will not compromise in the law. His opponents could not help but note ironically, now listen to this, that in 2012, Yalon himself was among those right-wing politicians who had condemned then-Defense Minister Ehud Barak for evacuating 15 families from the Bet Hamachpila in Hebron stating that the latter should be stripped of authority to determine the fate of the West Bank settlements. And that's what they're talking about now. They're talking about the exact same thing. They're putting Yalon's words in, back into his mouth from 2012, and they're saying, you know what? You even said that the defense minister should not have any authority to throw Jews out of their houses. And now, guess what? We agree with your statement, and now we want to implement it on to you on behalf of Jewish villagers in Judea and Samaria. Now, in spite of Yalon's words on Friday against those who break the law, many politicians said they believe that Jewish families in Hebron acted with respect for the law. Knesset Speaker Yuli Edestein Likud said, as a result, the right thing to do is wait and explore legal, legal options rather than rush to evacuate people from their homes. Jerusalem Affairs Minister Zev Elkin Likud said, This is not the right time to fight with Jewish villagers. It's not the right time. It's the right time to fight against terrorism and to strengthen the villages. Now, of course, one of the witches, the main witches of this country, weighed in, Zippy Livni. And she is a witch. She will be exposed one day for her witchiness. She said the West Bank, <laughs> which is, that's where that, that is, is Judea, Zippy. It's called Judea. Judea. Okay? Did you learn that in your lefty schools? Well, she said that Judea should not become the Wild West under the control of the hilltop youth. Yeah, they're really in control, Zippy. With your inflammatory words, you witch. Okay. It's not Israeli security against their interests, but an ideology. I really didn't get that paragraph. Um, maybe you can clarify that paragraph, Tova. It says, The tirade against the defense minister Yalon by Bayoud and members of the Likud indicate that it's not Israeli security against their interests, but an ideology that would lead one to state at the expense of Israel and its security, the rule of law. I guess, okay, so I guess she's saying it's an ideology, uh, you know, Torah values, which are stir against their ideology. Now, M.K. Yal ben Reuven of the Zionist Union called the family squatters. Zionist Union, no vey. Garbage, garbage, these people are garbage. Of course, M.K. Yov Kish and Smotrich they actually came to Yalon's defense, and they said, don't be belligerent against the defense minister, but, you know, again, also, let him listen to his own words from 2012. Now, I circled the bottom of this, and since we're getting close to the end, I'm going to jump down to it, if you can see there where I circled. Okay, the incident marked the first time in four years that Hebron's Jewish community which compromises a mere thousand people, has purchased a building. In 2012, Jewish families in Hebron, also represented by Levinger, who's you know, Levin, uh, representing these people, attempted to move into a three-story house across the park from the Cave of the Patriarchs, which they called Beit HaMakpilah. In that instance, they also provided proof of the purchase, received the right... Uh, purchased and received wide right-wing political support, including from Netanyahu. To date, legal issues have prevented them from moving into the structure. And that's the story, folks. Don't believe the politicians. They will keep these people out for years out of these structures.